10 times 10 is 100. I'm going to briefly mention the other model called R2D2 model. R2D2 model is a simpler model. It's the second page of your handouts. Read, reflect, display, and do is that model. Okay, R2D2. Read, reflect, display, and do. There are four things you can do online. You can read, you can reflect and write, reflective writing, you can display your learning in a concept map or timeline, or you can do something, you can solve something, you can create something, create a video, uh, create a podcast show. So read, reflect, display, and do. My co-author is holding up R, R, R2D2, I think we're doing there, R2D2. Read, reflect, display, and do. <laughs> so examples, words, auditory learning, verbal learning, part one of R2D2 model. Part one of the R2D2. He uses functions of the He's reading, he's using words, verbal information, okay? Now this guy here, usually has glasses on, like a visor on. I met him a couple of years ago at a conference. He was standing right next to me, but he didn't have his visor on. I didn't recognize him. In the, in the Star Trek, his name is Jordy LaForge. Anyhow, he was right next to me. He has a TV show called Reading Rainbow in the United States that helps kids learn to read. Podcasts, my university has a podcast show. Words, oral histories, collecting oral histories of people interviewing them, finding out what life was like in the 1960s or 1970s, 1980s, or way back 1940s, interviewing World War II veterans or whatever it happens to be, getting oral histories, words. There are a number of tools you can collect oral histories. Exploring famous people. This gentleman here is a very famous person who created the National Science Foundation in the United States. He came from MIT. He also wrote an article that predicted Wikipedia back in the 1940s. A very famous article called As We May Think that's still available online. Students can go online, read his article. My students read his article in week one of the class I'm teaching about. And they reflect on what he predicted in 1945 or what's true today. He predicted all sorts of web URLs, as I said, Wikipedia, uh, online uh, learning, and all sorts of things. Mozart online. The Mozart Project online. Life History of Mozart is on the internet. There's a website called the Mozart Project. If you teach music, okay, you can listen to his music, and you can have a beer with Mozart and Beethoven and sit for it. I guess that's a joke. Okay. Number of E, one E, science online. I mentioned immediate science. When an article is published today, it's free oftentimes online. It gets to researchers the same day. It can get to kids in schools. There are a number of reports today where you can have the research article come out. You can have an interview with a scientist who discovered the new finding. You might have a video. You might have pictures. You might have text. Immediate science. New species. I don't trust you, Q. Number two is observational learning. Reflect, observe, watch. Part two, reflective learners. There's a new website in the U.S. called BQO, Big Questions Online. Can you, can you control your mind? Do you have a soul? Um, all, all sorts of big questions that students reflect on. Can you control your mind? Yes, one. I have my students write their own big questions in our discussion board. Once a week, there's a big question posted that they respond to about the content I'm teaching them, okay? What if questions? What if Alexander Hamilton wasn't killed? Would he have become our president after George Washington? Would he have become our second, third, or fourth president if he hadn't been killed in a duel? He was the founder of the U.S. Treasury. He was George Washington's assistant in the, in the American Revolution. What if questions? Just suppose kinds of questions. Discussion question starters. Here we've got an article that came out a couple of months ago about Aboriginal population being the oldest population known 
in, in human kind and civilization. They were able to track ge genes and genetics to figure out the oldest species, the oldest race of human race. They found people in uh, parts of Australia are the oldest in terms of um, uh, their oldest civilization. You could wrap questions around that. You could have questions, in, if you teach architecture, you could show new buildings being built around the world. Paul's buildings in the world. Apparently you have new buildings here in tight land, tall buildings. I was in the second tallest building the other day. There's a new taller building built. Interpreting graphs. Here's a graph for figures on cancer research. As you click, you get information that you might analyze and discuss. In infographics, they call it, infographic discussion. Finally, visual kinds of learners. Part three, again, infographics you might embed in your class for discussion. Wordle, you can look at words that you're using. You put in Wordle or Word Sift or Word It Up, type in, um, cut and paste in your article, and it will show you what words you're using more than other words in Wordle. Visualizing words, seeing the words. My students put this on my door in my office, said, Dr. Bonk, you use the word learning too much, wiki too much, blog too much, social too much. They thought they were being funny. They got their grades, then they put this on my door. Okay, they were funny, okay. So these are some wordles, seeing words visualized. Interesting, seeing animations of climate change getting them to understand through climate change. Data visualization of, of, there's actually new data that came out in December that shows global warming in different ways. Satellite images of 32 years of satellite image just became available in December that students can go through and analyze. Cartography, <clears throat> in this case, we've got cartography. Here is half of Canada's population is down here near the US here I saw big Canada is most people just live in this little space cartography, showing economics, U.S. economics, most economics in California, New York, no one does a whole lot of things in the middle. It's really just the coasts. This shows prices of homes in America. Very expensive in California, very expensive in New York, not as expensive in Texas and other places. Visualizing data. Here's a visualizing map of languages. As you click on this map, you can see what languages are spoken in different countries, in Canada, in Turkey, in New Zealand, and in Turkey, you have different languages that come out. It's a website called Landscape from Maryland. Concept mapping, showing your ideas visualized, free tools for concept mapping on the web, CMAP, Liffy, Bubble.us, I'm running low on time, so I want to just click through some things here. Um, some people draw a talk. If I'm speaking, they'll draw my talk, and then they make it available online for others to see my talk, visualize my talk. They might put the visual tool, the map, with the video. I'm going to skip over a couple of these. Um, Live science, this woman here is a friend of mine who studies penguins in Antarctica and has a show that goes, or videos that go to 300 schools around the world of her penguin science research. I'm gonna skip over a couple of these. TED Talks, BBC, CNN. All these websites have short videos in the news that you can use in your classes to anchor instruction. Show a short video clip that you can use later on. We're at 12 o'clock here, so give me just a second, I'll wrap up. Um, I've got a website called the V Portal, Videos Online, to teach teachers how to teach online. I've got 27 short 10 minute videos at the V Portal that can show you how to give feedback, how to assess online learning, how to create communities, how to manage a class. These are all free videos online. Finally, tactile learners, kinesthetic. <laughs> So goal setting tools, so students can list their goals and what they accomplish. They can create videos, as I said earlier. They can create websites. So that's the doing part, having them create something, a podcast show, a book, a video, read, reflect, display, and do. There's four things you can do with that model. So let me ask you this. Briefly, I went through this model. In the longer, I went through this model. How many of you prefer this model, R2D2? 
How many of you prefer this model, tech variety model? Okay, about equal number. How many of you got no ideas from this? How many of you got, how many of you got more than four ideas from this talk today? My friend, the international school, I promised you two or three, you got more than four. Okay. So I'm happy, I hope you're happy too. Make it so. Make it so. Um, thank you for allowing me to come in today for two talks. I have one book left for the first question I'm asked. I saved one book. If someone really wants a book and didn't get it, think of a question for me. I will field that question and try and answer it before closing. Uh, who has a question and wants a book? The gentleman in the front. Yes. Uh, you are I want to know that how, how can we guarantee the quality of the most student or booking that career? How can we guarantee quality of the contents? That's a big question. How do we know content is of high quality? I tell people to look for, as a department, and discuss those places you feel trusted first, like UNESCO, the World Bank, World Bank Institute, Smithsonian, NASA. Those are trustable websites. Start there and build beyond those. I would start with those, that'd be one way to go. Second, at the end of the semester, review it, analyze it with your class, ask them. Third, as a department, collect the best 10, the best 20, highest quality websites you can find. British Library, for instance, has a wonderful website called the Turning the Pages website from the British Library. It explains all sorts of fascinating things at that website. This is a big question. <clears throat> I probably would need a half hour to answer it. So I'm going to give you the last book that I have here. Come up and I'll sign this for you <clears throat> at, the, at the end. Thank you very much for allowing me to come in today to, to talk to all of you. I will hang around for a while. Michael probably, Professor Michael wants to make a comment here at the end. And um, you want to make a comment here at the end. So. Thank you so much, Professor Chris as we can hear from his presentation, no one he, he is, uh, I think, um, I have the right to say you are the world number one most sought after speaker in this topic. So please give him a big hand. <laughs> he just showed us two main things. Um, the tech variety, if you ever going to try the tools that he recommended, I'm sure that you're going to find something that would be very useful for your teaching and learning and even life for the activity model. So if we try, then we will know. If we never try, we will never, never know. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Before she says something there, it will take years to try all these. Try one or two new things a semester. You know, don't do all this. Uh, the students in the back row, all the people in the back, you find one or how many of you got at least one idea today? Do something new. Uh, how many of you were sleeping the whole time? No, no, no. go ahead.
to present a token of appreciation. This is from our university and on behalf of our School of Liberal Arts and PhD program for Education and Administration. And my director is here, Assistant Professor Dr. Sukhinduna. And thank you for all for participation and uh, participate and uh, all my PhD students to attend this. And I think that you hope to enjoy and get some idea. And about uh, DBC student as well, we have to take it for presentation because Dr. Taegu Risho, yeah, she asked uh, her student to attend this and learn how to present what the presentation should be. It's a good presentation. Okay, thank you again. Thank you everyone. I guess this is the end of today's session. So I hope to meet up with you some other time in the near future. So thank you very much. Thank you. Let's see what's out there.